For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Dan Weber for instant analysis of USC's 30-27 to overtime loss to the BYU Cougars. Now, Dan, there's a lot to take away from this game, but what are your general takeaways from this loss? Well, I mean, the familiarity with it, the fact that as, as we had, as we felt in the Fresno State game, there's some echoes of 2018 in this game. Today, again, you had echoes of 2018. Mm -hmm. The same kind of situations, some of the same mistakes. Uh, a team that, you know, that you thought, okay, they've got it figured out what they're going to do on offense, for example. They're much closer to what they're going to do on defense. They've got a heck of a punter. All of those things, none of which turned out to be true. It looks more like uh, 2018 than the team you thought you were going to be seeing uh, in 2019. I mean, I was making fun about saying things like, you know, I've heard that they've actually been practicing on this kind of new offense, this sort of, I hear it's, I think it's called the air raid, where you throw the ball a lot, you use a lot of receivers, you get up to the line of scrimmage, you go real fast, and it's really hard to defend. Okay, I wish, you know, I wish that was not what we saw today and said, well, was that the air raid or was that the gumbo from last year? It was really hard to tell. I mean, obviously, you throw two interceptions right away on the road. Yeah. With a freshman quarterback, uh, all that stuff that happened last week is completely meaningless. And now you're in a whole different place. And uh, it didn't look like they ever really recovered in, in terms of confidence, in terms of what they, what they wanted to do. Uh, they knew they had to run the ball. Uh, Brigham Young said, we're going to drop eight. We're not going to let you throw it the way you want to throw it. Uh, and USC didn't have uh, options it looked like that they could go to. We thought they did. Uh, it turned out, except for some spectacular plays by, like a Michael Pittman, they did not. And uh, they, they ran the ball okay, but not when they really had to. Uh, Marquis Step got his first extended action, but still only nine carries. Uh, and uh, that just wasn't, wasn't enough to overcome a Brigham Young team. It was all fired up. and couldn't wait to you know get out there and play and running around like crazy and a team that in his first two games didn't look that athletic and they looked kind of lucky at Tennessee wasn't nearly athletic enough to stay with Utah today they look more athletic than USC there's really no excuse for that I mean that's not something I think you can correct um, that's something uh, that's more of a problem when you show up and you just don't look like you want to play yeah, now you mentioned a lot there. We're going to dive into all of it. But first off, like you mentioned, Keaton Slovis looked more like a true freshman tonight than rather he did against Stanford. Three interceptions. You mentioned the play calling. I think a microcosm of kind of this head scratching, uh, head scratcher uh, play calling was in the, the overtime when USC got the ball. Two handoffs, and then the Keaton kind of forces it in the, lot, in the middle where there's a lot of traffic there. What did you take away from this play calling? Because it didn't seem like what the air raid we knew and we've seen in, the, in practice and in this last couple games. Well, I mean, they weren't trying to win the game. They were trying to make it manageable. You know, get a few yards here and then a few more. And maybe it's you know, it's just a five-yard pass. Still got intercepted um, and threw in the traffic. It didn't look like, you know, when you get uh, uh, BYU goes first, kicks the field goal, you know if we score, we win. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. And it didn't look like they were trying to score. I mean, it looked like they were, I don't know, were they trying to – Avoid the interception, which they got. Were they trying to avoid the first down? You know, I mean, were they trying to just get to a field goal and uh, and hope uh, you know Chase McGrath can kick another one? And that where where does that get you? It just gets you another overtime period. Uh, Brigham Young was trying to win the game, yeah. and the USC defense really stepped up in the overtime. I mean, they yeah. shut Brigham Young down. I mean, they did things they hadn't done the whole game. Contained the quarterback. Really, uh, they were where they were all supposed to be. So you know, give the defense credit. Uh, in overtime, they got the job done. The offense uh, uh, did not. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to talk to offensive coordinator Graham Harrell after uh, the game today. Uh, he escaped the, the press yeah. there, but we'll probably get more information on what happened today on Tuesday after that practice. But as far as the defense, as you mentioned, they were put in some bad positions just with those interceptions. Um, but I think Zach Wilson, BYU's quarterback, showed a little bit more, a more oomph than we saw in the past two games. But they knew USC's defense that he could be mobile, he could be a scrambler. And that's something that they, they struggled with with Jorge Reina against Fresno State. What do you take away from this defensive performance? Well, at times they would have one guy get pressure. A lot of times they didn't get anybody. Uh, I thought that was 
uh, kind of stunning that they, they, they didn't have enough athleticism to uh, beat the uh, BYU guys up front. But when they did, when one guy did, uh, he looked like he had no chance to take uh, uh, Zach Wilson down in the open field. I mean, it was just like, and, you know, I mean, that's kind of to be expected. They don't, uh, they don't tackle uh, in practice. They've probably four weeks since they've tackled in practice. And, uh, and so they run into a couple of, you know, quarterbacks that can scramble and make them look bad. Uh, I don't know. You know, they've, they've got, they don't have a lot of time to get ready for, uh, for Utah that has, you know, a quarterback that's more athletic than, uh, than Zach Wilson and a running back who's just sensational. So, uh, you know, will they tackle this week? And I doubt it. Uh, they just didn't look ready to play. I mean, they, you know, they made enough plays to hang in there. They made enough plays to get the lead in the second half, even though they didn't really play very well in the second half. But uh, as far as winning this game, you didn't ever think they're going to win this game. I don't know that anybody at any time thought, yeah, USC's going to pull this out. Uh, there was that, that sense of doubt, much of what you uh, felt all through 2018. Well, keeping in the theme of 2018, Clay Helton in his postgame presser said some of the same things we heard in 2018. We'll check the tape. Uh, we'll correct the mistakes. He said that this is a special team. This is their special kids, and that's why he believes that they could do special things going on. Uh, Helton essentially described this game as an early non-conference win or loss that doesn't have to des- define the season. But I think when you look at this loss and look at the things that they weren't able to do, what they weren't able to execute or clean up, that makes you worried for the next games. It's not like this is something that you can just write off and, and they'll do better next week against Utah. This is just fundamental errors that continue to plague this team. I mean, it's how you play. It's not so much like they did last year. They were going to categorize all the penalties and then, you know, say, well, we don't do that one anymore, don't do that one anymore. This isn't a case of uh, putting everything up on the board and saying, yeah, don't do that, uh, you know, like, you know, tackle the quarterback. No, you have to actually do it. You know, you yeah. can't talk about doing it. You have to actually do do it. And uh, that's a problem. Uh, and uh, there's one thing, and I'm writing about it, that Clay said after the game, and you just shake your head. He said, this team is built for this. And you say, really? And he's talking about adversity and coming back. This team is, unfortunately, he's right. This team is built for this kind of a game. The way, you know, we haven't seen them practice in four weeks. Probably don't want to. But uh, uh, I think what we're seeing in these games is a lot of how they practice. And they were just so much more athletic than Stanford last week, as, yeah. as it looks like. But uh, uh, this is not, uh, it's not how you build a, a really good program. This was, this was a game you had to win. You were better than this team. And you had to be going into that um, Utah game with some confidence, with some momentum, yeah. with your fans excited. All of that, none of that's going to happen. Now, you know, maybe they scrap and uh, figure out a way. Maybe uh, Utah plays them differently, although you would think that every team that's on the schedule is going to look at what Brigham Young did and say, well, we're going to do that too. Yeah. USC has to get better. They can't talk about getting better. They have to actually do the work that gets you better. Can they do it? I don't think history says that you should be very confident that they can. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask you. It's a short turnaround. Utah was a game coming into the season. We knew that USC had to win just for the the South matchup. But now with this loss underneath their belt, they have to win this game even more. Um, Some players said that they like that it's a short turnaround because they can get the bad taste out of their mouth quicker. But if you're USC, how do you get this going with essentially no rest? Yeah, I mean, because the things you got to do, I think, are the physical things you have to do at practice. And I think with the physical game against Utah coming up in a short week, I don't know that you've got enough time to do those things. Now, maybe you make the commitment to doing that. You take the chance and the risk that comes with being really physical, and you set the tone so that when they come into the game Friday, they're ready to play that way. It it certainly did not look like they were ready to play uh, in any way. They just didn't look like they were moving fast and crisp and getting off the ball on either side of the ball. Uh, And I think you develop that in practice. And... We, uh, we haven't seen them since fall camp was over, and it looked like they were going in the right direction, but we've seen this uh, movie play out a lot, and usually what happens when, when they uh, start getting ready for each individual game, you know, I mean, I, I know Clay talked about we got to get our game plan ready for Utah. 
I think you got to get your team ready for Utah, not worry so much about the game plan. I mean, they kind of knew what their game plan had to be today against a team that wasn't athletic enough to play you man-to-man. BYU saw what happened to Stanford, said, we, we can't do that. They knew what was BYU was going to do. Yeah. They weren't ready to play. So if you're a USC fan and you're hearing us say these type of things, are you kind of in panic mode at, at the end of week three? I don't know if you're in panic mode because I don't know that this team is in a place where they could drop so much that you would go to panic. I mean, but you, you're not very upbeat. I mean, you're not, yeah. very, you're not very hopeful. Yeah. And, and when hope is about the only thing you've got going for you and you say, what's the point? Uh, uh, it, it's going to be an interesting week. Um, I think the people that are really unhappy, um, I mean, there are people who were unhappy, didn't matter if they want, were 2-0, and they were still really, really unhappy. This is not going to make them happier. This is, this, is, um, this is proof for all the, you know, the people that want, want uh, big-time changes in the USC football program to say, see, I told you so. This is not um, the way we should be going. And uh, based on today's game, they're pretty right. Yeah, and Clay was asked specifically, there was noise earlier in the week because of the AD move uh, with Lynn Swan resigning, and then they asked, well, there'll probably be more noise after this, this loss. How do you take it? And he said, well, we live in Los Angeles. There's noise all the damn time, he said. So uh, Clay, for his part, is just going to put his head down and keep doing what he does. Uh, but what do you take away from that if you're Clay? Well, as it turned out, there was almost no noise other than the media for about 30 seconds on, on the Lynn Swan thing. I don't think it mattered, it mattered to anybody to Clay, to players, whatever. I don't think it took away uh, at all from the preparation for this game. Uh, the noise from this game, there's going to be plenty of noise. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's exactly what you did not need going into a Friday night game at the Coliseum. I mean, you just have to understand uh, how that works and, uh, and to come in here and lay an egg. I mean, they just were not ready to play. There's no other you know, way around that. And that does not require corrections that requires a lot more than corrections and uh, to think that you can just identify to think that for example that game was a case of well they just play, made one more play than we did yeah. I mean you come on don't say that that's not true they made a lot more plays uh, with guys who weren't as good as your guys yeah. Um, and just a quick little injury update. Uh, Christian Rector was a game-time decision, did not play. Marquis Stepp uh, was a game-time decision, decision and did play. Andrew Voorhees did not play. And then uh, Greg Johnson came out after the first half. He had a tough hit. It looks like that shoulder that he had surgery on, so something to watch for going forward. Uh, and then Talanoa Hufunga, he, was, uh, he came out late. Uh, I talked to him after the game. He said he was fine, so nothing about that shoulder that he also had surgery on. And then I know a lot of people were worried about Vivai Malapai because he got tangled up and it looked pretty bad, but he was fine. He came back and actually played in the game so uh relatively good on injuries but we'll find out more on tuesday yeah i mean uh vi is amazing i i did not think uh, uh that he was coming back from that one the way his knee got twisted and uh and talanoa that's uh pretty encouraging uh but now usc has got got to get those guys up to speed where they can play up to their ability and that wasn't the case today yeah all right any final thoughts before we wrap it up here in provo utah uh, you know, I'm not going to say things like, oh, if they just identify the mistakes or this team was built for this or, you know, we're going to, you know, this is a special team or we're coming back from adversity. Don't tell us that. Do it. Just do it. Don't say it. You yeah. can't say it. Whatever you say doesn't matter. It's what do you do. And what do you do at practice? You play like you practice. I think for most of us who don't get to see practice anymore, all we have to do is watch the games, and we know how they're practicing. Yeah. All righty, that's going to wrap it up here in Provo, Utah. For Dan Weber, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.